I've done tutorials on how to calibrate your external display using X-Rite i1 Profiler along with X-Rite Pro devices. In X-Rite i1 Profiler, there is a function called RGB Gain. With RGB Gain, the device will measure the red, green, and blue output of the display. And if you set your display into a custom color mode, you can then control the output of those red, green, and blue color independently. Generally, this will produce a better color profile than if you would use the other preset modes that are built into your display. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the RGB gain mode and how you can dial that in on your display as well. I'm Art Suwensang. This is Art is Right. Before we start, please subscribe if you are new and hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload cool new videos like this. So for this guide, I have my MacBook Pro and a BenQ PD3220U. This is their 32-inch 4K design display. If you've seen my other videos with the BenQ PD3220U, my recommended color mode to do a display calibration on it is Display P3 because with Display P3, this display have been calibrated from the factory for greater uniformity. That means you're going to get even colors from side to side in Display P3 mode and also sRGB. But in this case, I'm going to show you how you can use the custom RGB gain on this display and how you can go in and set those things up should your display have those function and if you want to run a custom calibration with RGB gain. So the first thing I am going to do here is launch i1 Profiler. Now that I have i1 Profiler launched, I want to make sure that i1 Profiler is seeing my device, which it is with the green check mark. I am going to make sure that the user mode is set on advanced and then next up what I'm going to choose is display profiling. In the profiling screen here what I want to make sure is that i1 profiler is on my BenQ display because this is the display that I'm going to be calibrating. If this should show up on another screen in the multiple display setup make sure that you have this on the proper screen. To do that you can simply click on the display there and it will center itself on the proper display you're going to do the calibration on. Next up is the backlight. You can change the backlight. In this case, I am going to leave at default at white LED. White point. I'm going to leave this again at default of D65 because at 6500 Kelvin, our eyes see the most color at this spectrum. So we're going to leave it there. Luminous value. In this case, I am going to choose 100. But know that a value of between 80 to 120 candela are great for photographic work, both print and non-print, and also video work as well. Next up is Gamma. I am going to leave that at 2.2. If you have a reason to change that, you can, but in this case, I'm going to leave that at 2.2. Contrast Ratio, leave it at Native. Make sure that Flare Correction and Ambient Light Smart Control is unchecked. From here, click on Next. In this next screen here, we can leave everything at default. Just something to keep in mind that if you are a PC user, make sure you come in here and change the ICC Profile version to 2. If you're a Mac user, you can leave it at the default version 4. Next up is the amount of patch you want to measure. In this case, I am going to choose to measure a large amount of patch. So I'm going to do that and then click on Next. In this screen, this allows us to go in and customize a few more settings before we start our measurement. Number one, what I'm going to do here is make sure that ADC automatic display control is unchecked. And secondly, I'm going to make sure that adjust brightness, contrast, and RGB gain manually is checked. And where we're going to really focus on for this guide is using the RGB gain manually. From here, click on Start Measurement. Take your device. In this case, I have the i1 Display Pro Plus. I'm going to rotate the cover. And the box will pop down from the top there saying that you should tilt your display backwards. This way the device will lay flat on the display, eliminating any ambient light that may come in to contaminate the result. Click on OK to acknowledge the dialog. Now we have this dialog that comes up called Profile My Display. This is where we're going to go in and dial the setting. So under Profile My Display here, by default, contrast and brightness is checked in this case. RGB control is not. So in this case, what I'm going to do is click on RGB control. Once I have that done, I am going to click on Next. The program is going to run through a few preliminary calibrations in order to find the RGB value or the RGB output of this display and it's going to tell us to adjust that. We have now seen the indicator coming in. Because this is not using the right color mode to do this, the value is off right now and that's okay. 
What you want to do then is make sure that you consult with your display manual to find out where your custom color mode is and how you can dial up and down those RGB values. In this case, the RGB value on this display is under color. And in this case, the color temperature right now is grayed out. So what I need to do here is go in and make sure that I choose user mode. And now I have the color temperature enable. I am going to choose here and choose user defined. In user defined, I can dial in the red, green, and blue individually on this specific display. And many displays are going to have functions that are similar to this. It's probably going to be in a different place, but that's just something to keep in mind. So now I'm able to get red, green, and blue all showing green across the board. That's what I want here in this case. The target color that I have right now is 6500 Kelvin. The current value right now is 6469 Kelvin. So we're about maybe 30 Kelvins off, but that's okay because we're not really going to see 30 Kelvins. Even at 100 Kelvin, we're not going to see that big of a difference. From here, what you want to do is click on next. I1 Profiler is going to then measure the display for brightness. This is where we would then come in and set the brightness of our display. Because I already run a calibration on this previously, this display has already been set up to 100 candela. In this case, we're going to go through with the calibration and then from there, we'll come back, save the profile and run the validation. For a further and fuller explanation of what I'm doing here in this video, I'm going to leave another video in the link below so that you can view that video and get a further explanation on all these settings, why we shoot these settings, so on and so forth. But for this one, this is a quick guide on how you can go in and do a custom RGB gain dial on your display for a calibration. Now that the calibration is done, x i one Profiler is now running a validation or is verifying some of the results that is measuring to make sure that the results are good. From here, once it's done, we'll generate the profile, run a validation, and then we are set. Take the device down, put the cover back on the lens, and I'm going to leave my display tilted like this for now because I'm going to come back in here and run the validation again. From here, it will say that the measurement was successful. Perfect. Go into ICC profile. This is where you can name or custom name your ICC profile in this case. I always recommend to have the date there in the ICC profile name. It really helps out in terms of reminding you when the ICC profile was generated. Secondly, I'm also going to annotate this, um, noting that it is a custom RGB because we have gone in and dial in the RGB gain manually in this case. Profile distribution, I am going to check user level. This way, anybody who uses computer can have access to the profile. Profile reminder, click on none at this point because this is a demo. If you have an interval that you always like to recalibrate your display, it's a good idea to dial that in. Lastly, under ambient light monitoring, I will keep that off. Click on save profile. So now that the profile is saved, you can come in here and it will give you a certain result about the profile that you're able to achieve, contrast, measurement, and so forth. What I want to do here is click on display QA at the bottom there. And in this case, I am going to use the x 24 standard color checker chart or color checker classic in this case to run a validation. Click on measurement and we're going to click on measure. So in this case, we're going to take the lens off again. Hang the i1 Display Pro Plus from the display. Acknowledge that we have the device laying flat. Click on next. This is going to start its measurement of the 24 patches. After this, it's going to give us a Delta E result. All right, now that it's done measuring these 24 patches, take the colorimeter off the display, cover it up. And what we're going to do is look at the QA result. In this case, based on the result that we have received, we have achieved in all patches Delta E of 0.5 with the maximum Delta E being 1.1. In this case, the Delta E value that we were able to get out of this calibration is really great for our display. So from here, if you like to, you can add to trending, but pretty much that is how you would go in and calibrate your display using RGB gain. A few more things to keep in mind too, is that make sure that you leave the display running for at least 15 minutes before, this way the backlight have a chance to warm up. And also make sure that you go in and turn off the setting for both Mac and PC. There are certain display settings that you need to turn off before you run the calibration on your display. 
Another thing too is that if you run your display and you try to do calibration in this custom RGB mode, what I would definitely do is consult the manual and also run some testing on it to make sure that this is going to be the best mode to use on your display. For instance, this BenQ PD3220U, the better mode to use or the better color mode to use in this case would be Display P3 because it has a greater uniformity compared to any other color mode that is built into the panel. So that's just something to keep in mind. But anyway, I hope that you find this video on how to go in and dial these RGB gain manually helpful and hopefully achieve a better profile out of your display too. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comment section below. Give this video a like, subscribe to my channel if you are new, hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload cool new guys like this. And until next time, I just write.